You're listening to End of the Real. Oh my god! G'day ladies and gentlemen, and today we watched a movie. It is Twisted Pear by Neil Breen. It is definitely a, for me, it felt more like a fever dream of multiple movies mashed together. But well, let's just let's just get into it. So I, I'm your host, Jared, and here's my co-host, Ethan. Hi. Yeah, so Ethan, we forced one of our friends to watch Twisted Pear with us. Yep. It's something I've been wanting to watch for a long time. I've been wanting to watch a Neil Brain film, but you never seem that keen on it. And and I, you I know did. what? I, uh, I I got exactly what I was expecting. It it is like, it's like your fourteen year old sort of on the spectrum cousin has made a forty at an hour and forty minute movie. See, I I actually with like some of his school friends, um, and that's the level of acting. And story. No, see, our, our yeah. friend said... It's just weird. Our friend was more like... It's more like a four-year-old running around playing, like, imaginary worlds. Well, the worlds. ideas. Yeah, because as he's running from set to set, he's like... And it, you get the narration going, and this is the enemy base. This is where he makes his biomedical terrorist junk. How does he think about this? How does he come up with this? Well... He's an adult. He is a fully grown man. Yeah. There are, there are adults involved in this production, Okay. There are fully grown. Like, are, are we also? To, are we going to assume that he is like, it's genuine, you know? Is this genuine? I is think this it genuine? Could not be not genuine. Let's do. Let's attack that question first before it, we do anything else. What What do you mean by genuine? Do you think this is a genuine attempt at making a good movie? Uh, I don't think it matters to me at all because okay. my feelings towards it would still be the same. Which is that it's like a confusing bundle of weird ideas. Right. Incompetently made. And glued together with stock footage. Yeah. I've never seen stock footage used like that. There is so so much. To me, it doesn't matter whether this is well made or not. Or or like intentional or not. Intentional. It's just, it it still is what it is. So even if it wasn't, like, even if it was intentionally bad, he's actually hit the mark. If this was intentionally bad, I'd be amazed that someone could make such a terrible thing right and if it wasn't intentionally done this man's a crazy person who maybe should be on a watch list this reminds me of videos i made years ago that are not public anymore well that's it it feels like it's a it's a kid's school project well yeah well what i did years ago i did like a bad it was intentionally bad uh video game reviews in front of a green screen with friends and would get drunk and try and do really bad reviews of video games. Yeah, but they weren't entertaining at all. Wait. Whereas this kind of A is. lot of the things were pretty similar. It was just an overuse of green screen and shitty editing. And you thought you were funny. And yeah, but I wasn't. Compared to this, which is funny. But that's why I just find... Unintentionally, probably. That's the interesting bit. This is unintentional and it's hilarious. Although, I have to say, I didn't laugh. Like, like... We say it's unintentionally funny. Yeah. I don't know if it's unintentionally funny or unintentionally oh, weird. No, I did laugh at some things. Uh, my, my The things I found more funny were the like, interactions between the other actors and Neil Breen. Not, not Neil Breen... You, you keep using the word actors. Yes. I don't know if I'd use actors or... Hostages. Possibly friends. I, possibly... <sighs> Paid workers. I I think he I had was real say guns. Colleagues. I think he had real guns on set, and he was like, "If you don't do this, I Pointing will shoot them at people. you. I will fucking shoot you." That's yeah. the only reason this movie could have been made. He's made multiple well, movies. That and the fact that he had access to a university somehow. You know, this is like his fourth movie. This is like his fourth movie. He's filmed. He has filmed four movies. You four know what? Feature, that that like, probably that that's oh. probably like the clincher for me. Is like, is this intentional or not? This is an intentional. You, you couldn't make this many movies and, like, keep at it. Right? It's crazy. And, ah, oh, it's special. This movie is a special film. It's a very special film. It is unique. I don't know. I don't think I liked it as much as you did. No, I get like, what I'm you not, mean. I'm not, I just don't get, I, I'm just not as enamored with this whole thing. Like, I, I understand it's like, it's a weird film. Yeah. It's terrible. But at the same time, I didn't really enjoy it. And it was kind of boring. I mean, it, it is fascinating from like to sit back and just watch what's happening and try and figure out what's going on is pretty fascinating. It's but very I don't lackluster. know if I really enjoyed it. Very lackluster. Well, there's a lot of, well, that's what I mean. It's like a student film where they're like, they don't really know what to do in a scene. So they'll just have them stand there staring at the camera for like a couple minutes before something happens. Yeah. There's a lot of like spots like that. 
and well, that's the thing. It's very slow pans. If they, we only ever get s- like steady shots or well, slow pans. Well, we actually pans. thought the uh, the copy we had was like broken at the start. Oh my god, that was great because it it kept like freezing, and we'd be like, "What's happening?" And then after a couple of minutes, one of them would start to fade out. And we'd realize it was just really bad editing. Oh, this movie. So it is a Neil Breen extravaganza. It's all Neil Breen, by the way. Did that's, you hear Neil Breen's in it? That's where. That's what makes these movies like gold. Is that they are they are directed and every, everything is complete control of someone who truly believes. Even and the that's companies when, that helped to oh, make this film are made by Neil Breen. Oh, that was so good. That was the best reveal at the end. Yeah. Awesome reveal at the end to find that out. But let's go into this movie. Let's start this movie off. Where what do we where we about? start? What is this? What is okay. It's a fever well, dream. Well, it starts with uh, two uh, long cuts of stock footage. Of children. Of eating, twin children just eating. eating food. And then playing in the ocean. Right? That's exactly how Aaron Neil Breen narrates a lot of this film. He's just narrating, well, that's me over there. Oh, no, that's... Oh, that's... Okay, so... That, well, 40% that, of this Kate movie is Kale. him talking over stock footage or yeah. him inserting himself into stock footage and talking over it. He could have done a shorter film. You know? It could have been shorter. Maybe 10 minutes. You know? Well... <laughs> it could have been a 10-minute film. Just chuck it up on YouTube. But somehow he he makes them and then no, he, he I, burns I don't think them he at could home. Fit this much incomprehensible plot into like a ten minute bit. Well, it starts off in Kate and Kale, the identical twins, and then the superior. I like. I mean, jump well, in I if you think. Feel, okay, I, you what can was get it? This, but what was it? The superior entity. Was it an alien? Maybe because like yes, yes, but was, it was. Was it an AI or was it making them AI? It made or them AI. Was okay. It, Wait, wait. What was it, Jared? Because it took... Th- okay, so they are... What was it doing to them? They're human kids to begin with. Okay. Yeah. Right. Then the superior entity takes them into space? Multiverse? Well, was, something? was the superior entity that alien head that we saw floating around? No. At the start and the end that he's talking to? No. When they I go into do. the... What what did you guys say? But, it was like a World of Warcraft backdrop? Oh, my God. That's so badly. It looked like the Night Elf area. But anyway, let's... Uh, the, the superior entity took them and they were humans and then he made them AI? He made them more humanoid. He made them more humanoid, which doesn't make any sense since they already were 100% human. You well, can't get, become more it's humanoid. Hard, you, you, can't, you become less humanoid. Throughout the movie, I was trying to figure out what exactly their powers were. I think they're invulnerable. But although they seem to be like really afraid of gunfire. Uh, well, I watched The Matrix recently, and it felt like they the Matrix. They jump implants. around, yeah. They're, they're it felt matrixy. like The Matrix, but they s- get turned into some sort of super being. I honestly, it doesn't make any sense. And they're there to fight for good against evil. But I couldn't figure out what evil was. Was was evil evil AI or was it just evil in general? Like evil, just evil. Like Coos is evil, yeah. Coos is evil, I think. Well, we definitely know he likes diamonds. Yeah. Because well, he is fondling those diamonds like but what about Epstein the... would fondle a young... Ch- anyway. But what about the three... Uh... Oh, no, but th- that's not done by Kate, is it? Okay. So the two brothers... <clears throat> uh, it's kind of like a Braxis where they both work... Don't, don't fucking... <laughs> re- don't, don't, don't reference they're, they're, another movie that both, we don't understand. They're both used by the aliens to fight evil, apparently. Right. Right. Uh, was it Cade or Kale? I think it's oh, Cade. Fuck it. I think Cade falls out of favor. Yeah, Cade screws up too many times, and they strip him of his power, and they send him back to Earth. He becomes a, a druggy fuck up. Okay, yeah, that. What the fuck? Who? Although he's still interested in like sort of fighting evil because he we. I thought it was Kale who was doing this. I couldn't tell them apart. For I a can't long time. remember. Because they wear the same baggy jeans, and yeah, you've but, only ever seen them from behind. But they do the Star Trek logic, so it's like a mirror universe, like the evil universe. So the evil one, well, evil. I guess it was. He's good, not though. evil though. Well, oh, the druggy. He beats his wife. Let's say the druggy. He's well, a fuck up. well, his wife did say that she beat him up too. Yeah, she started it. She actually did. Uh, but I mean, like, let's just admit they're yeah. both scum. So he, for some reason, he's kidnapping random. Well, he's got a beard. He's got a beard. Well, yeah, okay, that. he's got a beard. The bad, well, the, ugh, God damn it. Fuck up. The fuck up has a beard. Yeah, it has a beard. And it's great. It looks like the Star Trek. It looks it's like the Star thick, Trek. It's a luscious evil. beard. It's a great beard. You, you Compared admit, to the other facial hair in this movie, 
which is occasionally just mustaches that have been taped to different people. I'm I'm not watching even... that mustache move from person to person throughout the film was very entertaining. Yeah, me, because actually. they that, that was my favorite. Part. They spent all their money on the mustaches and beards. Well, you got you got to remember, all there's what, like what do you reckon? Five dollars? Maybe ten people in this film, and he reuses a lot of people multiple times. So to make yep. them look different, he's got this mustache that is obviously like it's sticky tape with a mustache drawn onto it and it goes from person to person yeah to make it to make it look like a more wide cast because apparently you know, he couldn't the bald guy it. will put on a hat and then he'll take the hat off and he'll put the mustache on and then later on you'll see him with that the mustache or the hat and he'll just be a random executive later this on. props budget is legitimately like less than I would spend if I was to do a YouTube video I, I like if I was to say where I'm gonna do a YouTube the video props where I'm gonna was play the local op shop yeah no, no, because dude, it's so less. many of them wear. I think there was one guy Sticky who, tape who was mustache. wearing like a good suit, and then that's his own suit. The detective shocked me because of his pants. Uh, so after those giant pants, yeah, he was so wearing daddy's pants. The the evil, uh, the fuck up twin has been kidnapping executives who instantly confess to like all the crimes ever, and then he's torturing them in a basement for most of the film for some reason. But uh, the detective who's on the case is wearing these pants. They, they look like clown pants. They're like four or five sizes too large for it. They look like his dad's pants. It's like someone's done like a, a before and after. They've gone on an extreme diet and he's put the before pants on. and they Because they were hitting the floor and everything. It was clear he, they weren't his pants. That detective gets used multiple times throughout the film as like the other person on the other side of a phone call. Yeah. But it's so strange because they use the same shots of him every time, but they won't have him talking. It'll just be him walking and yeah. then flicking the other person talking to him. So you get good views of the pants. Multiple times. But the fuck What up was the point is... of him finding the syringe? Oh, because then he realized the fuck up K was the druggie? No. Doesn't lead him Was that to meant it. to be for us to realize it wasn't our cage? Well, Kale? I think because we Neil already knew. Brain forgot about the detective trying to find the fuck up i think he forgot because he just fucking disappeared because dr- like druggy neil breen uh after he kills some executives he accidentally drops uh, a bloody syringe there okay. and uh the detective finds it they analyze it and they find out it's dna they don't have a track on because this, that's kind of this it. movie in it's, the it's end just so strange this movie in the end there are three different in my opinion there are three different fucking stories and no. Neil Breen decides not to finish a single one. He so, just stops halfway through the film. I don't, on there, all I don't three think of there them. are three stories. I think there's ah. one story, but there's a couple of different plot lines, obviously. But the, the reason it feels incomplete is because it's setting up for a sequel. No, because they all stop. It's not. Neil Breen is not setting up for a sequel. No, it is. Okay. It's okay. not. Cade and, uh, Cade and Kale have to reunite. Uh, we still don't really know who the good and the bad guys are. No, that's Neil Breen. What's films. happened to the druggy wife? No, that is Neil Breen. He's. Try, like seriously, it end, okay, it ends, I know what you're saying. It ends it with a giant like credit bit saying Cade and Kale will return. Does it? Yeah, I so don't. It's think the first he, thing that happened after. He just ended that. How did for you fun. not notice that? Did it you go to the toilet right? You were fucking end? trusting Neil Breen's editing on this. No, I'm saying that's why none of it makes sense though, because he thinks it's going to be more. I don't think he does. I think he added that in at the end just because, just while he was editing, just to make it make some sort of sense. I think he legitimately didn't know what he was doing, just ended the movie, then realized, oh shit, there's all this cliffhanger stuff, and added that in. Because this is Neil Breen, and you're giving him too much fucking credit. Okay. All right, that's Fine. what I think. I think. All right. Well, we have shot, like, at the start, there is so. Like, this doesn't even make any. This is well, the yeah, This well, doesn't this make the sense. To explain like, so many a lot just of things. random bits that just happen that there are aren't a lot connected of, to anything. There are a and lot. Then the connected things. Just happen sometimes out of order. Like we're saying, like as Ethan was explaining the fuck up, Cade, he story, right? You understood. Oh, okay, the bad, well, the fuck up one. He it goes gets people, tries to like, that's how he gets rid of evil, kind of. But, there's but the he whole steals from them. Bits with his he just steals wife. from them. But but sorry, but real quick, what I mean is that when we explain it, th- this makes a bit more sense because when you watch it, th- it is interlaced. With a lot of just random stock footage of the good kale, it just and it, interplay. And like occasionally, he into once the or twice, it actually switches perspective. But he's it's it shows a lot of random. Literally, these are just random scenes of the good kale in stock footage doing things. It's like sometimes there'll be there'll be soldiers, 
and he'll say, come with me, I'll protect you. And then the and stock then footage so- soldiers will start moving again yeah. after they've stopped being blurred. Uh, there's uh, other points when he starts making love to an eagle. You can tell he really likes eagles. Oh, he saw man, the stock that footage was of the so eagle. Good. He had stock he footage thought of that the was eagle so he's put himself cool. into. But obviously the eagle must land, eat a bit, and then take off. Because, so because he's looped it. So it lands, and then its wings start going forward and back. Like he keeps uh, letting it play, then rewinding it. That was one of so the, the ones where he put the most effort he to. It. He put the most effort into that because at first he goes up to it and then he backs up as if the eagle had like kind of yeah. postured up against him. And I was like, whoa, Neil Breen, whoa, don't act or anything. Now we should say both the brothers are in strange relationships. I, I really okay, want to talk yeah. about the relationships they're both in. I think we should because that's the most interesting bit. They're, it's the interactions with other people. Oh, yeah, the whole crazy, oh, uh, Kuz is going to take over the world with his... Medi bio stuff. That was just an excuse to have explosions in the background. Like I didn't understand any of that. The relationships were actually kind of interesting. Do Cade's story. Cade's story with his real so Cade Which one's Cade? Well Cade's the fuck up one and he okay, so is the, trying to destroy yeah, evil by grabbing the three executives, which we have multiple scenes of him just torturing shooting them and executives. torturing them. That's it. But now he let's goes go to his back actual to story. His house, which is I think just a bedroom. And his wife is there, and they're surrounded by all these open bottles of wine that he, they don't seem to finish anything. All these bottles of wine have like half, they're all like half full and stuff, but they're the same brand and everything. Well, they are druggies. And there, there are pills everywhere. That's druggies for you. And they're sitting around, they're just like, I don't want to do anything. Where's my drugs? And then they just start smacking at each other. So they have a few different scenes where she smacks him and he smacks her. Of course, the audio is all out, so occasionally there'll be like a comical smack, and then for all the other hits, there'll be nothing, and then she'll accidentally go back a bit too far. Oh my god, she rolls bed. out of the bed. She just rolls herself out of the bed, smacks into the ground, probably falls on a syringe. Yeah. Uh, eventually, she has enough of him, or she wants more drugs. I couldn't tell. I think she wants. He brings her money. I don't know what. They seem to really be happy for a little bit. There's this one part where they seem to have all the drugs they do want, and they're just both like, I am content. Yes, this is happy. Oh, yeah, when he gives two for me, two for you. That was really sweet. He two gives for her you. two extra pills. Yeah, just in case. That was so weird. Eventually she leaves, and uh, the other brother gives her some money. Yep. But, but that's all of Kate's but the, story. Go- but the good brother and his that's, wife that's are all weirder. Of, that is, okay, so that... Again, that is all of Cade's actual well, story. He's, he's but also meant to be like bitter that he's been kicked out of the space program. They have like one scene like that. Yeah. But, but, but oh man, point whenever they, whenever the two of them are on screen, the effects just die because oh, suddenly it becomes it comes it becomes really slow and, and laggy. One of them will stop completely moving while the other talks. But that that is Cade's entire like that is his entire story. But he has like. Half an hour, half an hour screen time, but we just summed it up. Just in like him a standing minute. in front of people in a hoodie, torturing them. It's because that's repeated, and then him just repeated with his. He has like three different scenes, which he does about six times. We were expecting him to be like really bitter and like kill the good brother's wife or something. Yeah, we all said that, but again, but we no, gave too much happens. credit. We gave way too much credit to Neil. Yeah, we fucked up. We thought he would be able to do something. Because and the we good brother up. and his wife have an even stranger relationship. You really need to see this movie to see how broken it is. Because a podcast makes it sound a lot better than it really is. Oh, yeah. Like, this is this sounds coherent-ish. So, tell everyone how we meet his wife. Oh, the good wife? Yeah. Well, as you know, when you're in... Fr- What's the university? There? I, university I of Nevada or Nevada. something. Yeah, Nevada State Everything College. Everything is shot at this university. At night. College. At night, by the way. That's yeah. very important. My at guess night. was that it's like a Dolomite situation where he's the janitor. See, and he's got keys to the whole no, place. No, I'm pretty sure he's an architect. One of them is the janitor. They're, look, there. Okay, one of the crew... One of the actors is a janitor. No, there. I, I, I... There are literally only like three options here, okay? Or like four options, okay? Yeah. So... Um, one of them is someone either works there or goes there and has access for some reason. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's that's reasonable. Um, the other one, which honestly is reasonable as well, is 
they just went there to shoot at night, and, and they said, and, and the access. university said they could as long as they didn't damage anything. Oh no, I re- like, but they, they go, no, no, in, I reckon they, they go didn't into even the ask. labs. No, they go into the secure labs. Yeah, but have you been to a university? There are kids walking around. You can get through doors. No, but they no, but it's at night. They're just walking through and opening yeah. all these like locked doors and stuff. Someone's got to have a key. No, no, you can do that at some universities. They're bad. Uh, mm. Yeah, I know. Security is bad. Yeah, but you're they, right. I, they I reckon into, they had they, access. They get into the labs and they I get into like the computer labs and stuff. That's a lot of like expensive kid, equipment. One of the students or someone who worked there had access. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Unless if Neil brings some lockpicker, but that'd be weird as fuck. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be a nice twist. Um, he breaks into these places he films at. So, of course, it's always filmed at night. And as Neil Brain is just, well, okay, there's a hobo. I guess that's that's the center of the shot, isn't there? There's there's a there is a homeless ho- man homeless feeding man. two fake rats who keep moving around. So I think they're meant to be real. There's a, a motif in this film of uh, fake animals moving around like they're alive or turning around to stare at people. But there are there because are, Coos, yeah. the evil guy, has three porcelain like or fake cats on his desk in front of him next to his uh, diamond ball. They don't do anything. And they, yeah, but they constantly move in every shot. They're they're facing a different direction. And occasionally it'll just focus on them and they'll turn around slowly. So I was like, are they meant to be the bad guys? I don't I know. I don't fucking know. But anyway, so there's a homeless guy and he's feeding his rats. Along comes a fairly good looking woman holding some papers and the good kale coming by. Comes and, by, yeah. by and just smacks him out of her hand like, oops, sorry. And then didn't he mean starts, sc- she's like, starts picking up and he goes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let I will pick help. them up. Let me help. Let me help. And he, like, I'm, not I'm gonna, so sorry. You know, How about dinner? Would you like dinner? How I'll, about, I'll meet you here at eight. Yeah. Be I'll, here at eight. No, I'll, I'll else... buy you a drink. I'll buy you a drink. It, How about you buy, I buy you a drink. Eight o'clock, eight o'clock. I'll meet you here. And now at this eight point, o'clock. we just think she's a random woman. This man has run into an assaulted. And this is weird. Why would Even you? Even the homeless guy who's watching is like confused. He's this, visibly confused by what's going this on. This is when I did bring up this point. Okay. So now uh, Neil Brain, I'm going to say he's a bit full of himself. He's got an ego, a big ego. And he thinks he's God. He literally thinks he's god so he in the movie he's written himself in as a god hero savior best humanoid in the world character when in reality he's like a 60 year old dude with a very bad frizzy hair i don't want to hate on him too much but he's got the dad jeans and that's what he is in reality it's just i'm sorry but that's not the perfect human but anyway that that's the thing I get that if he has an ego, he writes himself in as a god creature. That Are makes you sense. Angry that he keeps like having attractive women around him. No, why does he write himself in then in this scene as a weird pervert? Oh no, no, but we think he's a weird pervert, but it turns out he's not. He and his wife are just kinky. So, uh, he apparently comes back to that spot at eight o'clock because the homeless person's there and the mice have moved, and he's like, "Oh, she isn't here waiting for me." And at this point, we don't know it's the wife, so we're like. Why does he think this woman would, who he like assaulted, would come back here? Yeah. And then it goes, it goes to his weird narration, which is just usually like spewing thoughts. And yeah. he's going, "Oh, I decided to follow her to find out where she was," and it's him just going to his house in the middle of the night. And then like surprising this woman from behind. Yeah, he and then co- she he fights comes him. In through, he comes in through the back door, and at this point we're like. Oh, what's going to happen? Is is he going to, like, spy on her? He's is a this, rapist. Is he, like, invisible? Is this, like, a power of his? And no, he comes in and she starts screaming and they start fighting. Yeah. And we thought he was, like, trying to rape or kill her. And at this point, I was like, oh, is he the evil Kale? Because we didn't know that he w- the evil Kale had, like, a beard at this point. Oh, yeah, they were hiding. So I was like, oh, is this the evil Kale? Because I wasn't sure what's going on. And they start fighting and they struggle for ages. And Don't- she breaks... Uh, a picture over his head, and you get a this terrible frame. glass sound effect. Which it has no glass. It's great. It's yeah. brilliant. That honestly, this is one of the best scenes. And then, then after down. a few minutes of struggle and like screaming, they start laughing because it find you find out, oh, she's the girlfriend, partner, wife, or whatever. And this is their weird rape play that they enjoy. And I felt incredibly uncomfortable because I I, I talked about this many times before, but. It's just an older dude who's put together his movie and goes, okay, I'm now going to get an attractive woman to kiss me in all these scenes. 
And there you wasn't could, that much of that. It in wasn't the film. terrible. Like I'm pretty sure these earlier ones are a bit worse. It wasn't terrible, but you could tell it wasn't comfortable. I just no one was uh, comfortable in this film. I just wanted to say, like, there was some it's weird not gonna make sexual it this film. things on between them. This it, film's not going to make it for you. I'm sorry. I said go into any other line of well, work. Well, I mean, later on when they're in the lift and you see that. For some reason, uh, whenever they go to the university, which is meant to be their workplace, well, apparently he's fucking they don't, everyone. They don't, do they work together in the same for the same organization? No, they just had the university shoot on, so every fucking scene was at the university. No, but I mean, I think they work in the same for the same organization, but at like different levels. Dude, I don't fucking know. I don't know what he did. I don't know who his boss was. Well, I have I know, no idea. Yeah, as they get into the lift, they're all cold towards each other. Toward each other but then, as the lift door opens. They're making it yeah, out. they're making out and stuff and pretending not to know each other. And then they also have... Then they walk off and they see it, this lab room and they go, I've got some time. And they go into it and you're just like, no. Uh, no. I felt bad. I felt ill. The whole thing was uh, just so strange. What about the muse? I can't Speaking remember. of weird women in this uh, film, oh, but wait, the muse. Wait, the homeless guy, yeah? Yeah, who's who's been forced to watch their weird role play act? Is that some weird like s- kinky public sex thing where you essentially like I don't know? Is he humiliating the homeless? Like it's weird because no, he's not find... humiliating them because he was <sighs> chummy and he kept giving him coins. But is he kind of using the guy? Who was the guy in leather who kept walking by? What guy in leather? Uh, so after Kale does his whole, uh bumping and knocking the papers out of his hands routine. Some guy, you don't see his face. Oh, no, face. that was Neil. Was that, that was the Cade. evil one? That was Cade. Oh, okay, okay. Which is, that's where we thought Cade was going to come do something to the wife or something. Because no. he's, like, following him for a while. Yeah, I don't know. He just finds him, though, straight away as soon as he knows Cade's alive. Yeah. Like, stra- like not finds him, but the scene starts with both of them in the same scene, and he goes, Oh, I thought you were dead. So, good Kale gets uh, orders to attack to to uh, hunt down this guy called Kuz. Kuz. Now C- this, this is what I don't get. A X X C U Z Z X or something. I thought or it was X- double X. Z. Or I, two X's. I don't know. They kept pronouncing it differently, and it's written weird in the credits. Yes. Uh, I who does he work for at this point? Kuz. No, Kale. Ah, oh, Kale works for the human agent people. But I he, think. he gets abducted by the it's aliens. It's that woman, the woman. The and older is, woman. Yeah, but who is she? She's not the alien AI thing, is she? She's just some human organization. I don't know. Well, all I could think about, too, was that I bet Neil Breen spells of spam. I thought it was tuna. Spam. We, we see a bit of the organization he works for in one scene. Uh, it's just a boardroom with the same actors you see throughout the film sitting around and they just word salad different like that was so interesting good. sounding words like one of them goes oh ai ai that will take over the world another goes biomedicine and then another goes homeland security is ready that was great it goes for like five minutes and then that just was awesome eventually saying different and words it doesn't lead to anything we don't know what it well they, he reuses the foot uh, the uh, audio later but it, it was doesn't the, make any you sense you know what it reminded it, it felt like okay oh you've got to show this guy's in like a really serious he, he's joined a firm and is in a serious business so it opens up to the boardroom and they're all saying business stuff business so things it, he looked it, up, he instead looked up of them going like words. business 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 it's every one of them saying like a weird oh Bioterrorism. Yeah. But there's nothing around it. So they just say a weird word. Did did Kate also like Kate's you know, I mean, obviously Kate is Requiem for a Dream. The drug just like, guy. I haven't seen that movie. Wow. I always reference Requiem for a Dream when it comes to drug movies. But you know, it's it's obviously it's his attempt at Requiem for a Dream. And is is it Kate the one who goes, Who am I? What am they I? They both say that what happened to times us throughout the film. I love that. Who am I? What am I? Yeah, what yeah. What happened to Kate us? Kate says that, and uh, Kale's big thing is, uh, I miss what I never knew. I don't which know. Which he must have thought was a really cool line, because he says it a few times. So we got Cause, though. Cause is a... The evil guy. Was it? He's a... He's going to use his he, bio... I wrote it down here. Bio... Ter- bio gel? He, he, no, no, he wants... He's bio something. He's a biochemical person, and he's... 
going to use it to cause biological mutant warfare. Yeah, and take over the world, which um, Kale tells us actually isn't that difficult. Well, the I, terrible ways we live in. All we know about Kors is he fondles diamonds constantly. He talks constantly. like he's constantly got a voice modulator on. Hey, do you think it's because and he he's didn't followed have a cat? around by a sparkly woman with butterfly a, a wings? A muse, a muse. Who, yeah, is is credited as I think like the muse. She's pretty hot. But she doesn't was... say anything. She's just always standing next to him, looking up and down. And then right at the end of the film, she transforms into a pile of diamonds. Is she, is she a mutant thing? Because if she is, maybe we should let Cause do his thing. Because if everyone's going to turn into a mutant, like, super hot butterfly, I think let it happen. No, I don't know what she was. I don't know who Coos was. I don't know what his organization was. I because think he just wanted they're, people because to be butterflies. They're, they're teleporting uh, men in black. No, no, he wanted people to be butterflies or maybe cat girls. Maybe that's what it was. I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. Well, all we know is that he's got some sort of refinery because that's the only stock footage uh, Neil Breen has that he could picture. use. He's got a single picture. He's, he's got, got a, a picture single picture he puts that he in. flies around in occasionally in a bad cutout and uh, the boiler room to this university. Well, he goes there twice. The first time he goes there, he finds... <sighs> I don't know. There's four guys it's who are a, dressed sort up. Of James Bondy sort of thing, but wow. with aliens. James, and you're giving him that everything. much credit. No, no, no. But I mean, that's what he's sort of like based it off. Well, he goes there the first time. Well, no, actually, wait. No, sorry. The first time he meets Cause, he buys a painting of him. You know, that's where the James Bond thing comes in because he's pretending he's uh, an investor and an art dealer. Yeah. And he wants to deal art. And invest in his end of the world scheme. So, but how about when he buys a painting though? He buys a painting. The muse brings that it painting over. was kind of, I I don't know what was happening. It was kind of weird though. It was because weird. In a he cool put way. stock footage in the painting. Yeah, that was awesome. All of a sudden, he's he's holding an empty, uh, like just the frame, and I'm like, what the hell is this? And then all of a sudden, this stock footage of this girl dancing in paint is just in the middle, and they're all just staring at it for like a minute. Yeah. I mean, th- that's some weird stuff. I like that. Yeah, that was that was actually kind of interesting. It went nowhere. And then he, uh, straight away he goes to cause afterwards and goes, I would like to invest in your uh, world domination and scheme. And as they're talking, as this is going on, because it's obviously dubbed over, they just walk off in different directions. What does he say, though? It's like, I would like that's to. It. That's, that's it. That's all the information we get. And then, then later on he goes to Cause's place, which is the university. The second time. Yeah, the university... So, because they're using the same university for everything, the uh, Kale's boss has a view of the bad guys' labs or lair or whatever. You can you're constantly looking at each other, and he looks at some very important beakers, especially the ones labeled H H uh, two O. Is this the time he blows it up? Yes. No. no this no, is no, the first goes, time. He goes back when it turns all matrixy. Well, the first time he goes, it's pretty boring because there's four dudes with guns apparently, and Eventually, he goes up and he finds Cause. Cause says something. No, that's the second time he goes, isn't it? I don't know, but he says something. Then they just remember they just disappear. Yeah, no, that's the second time he goes and he blows everything up, isn't it? No, 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 no. I swear, the first time he just goes and they disappear, and then he leaves, and then he goes back later and he says, "I've got to end this," and that's when he blows it up. The first time they just they literally they literally evaporate on the screen and disappear. I'm not. And it's also someone else playing Cause. It's some older Coos. It's some older dude. Yeah. No. Uh, what does he say? He I can't remember anything. It's not I important. couldn't understand. At that point, I couldn't understand what Coos is saying because he's got a weird voice modulator over him. But he goes back a second time late. Wow. Well, oh, that's after his wife betrays him. Oh, yeah. We should talk about that. So uh, <laughs> they're working for some sort of organization who are fighting the evil organizations. Again, none of it makes sense. Uh, his boss calls him up and tells him that they've got a traitor, and I I couldn't figure out exactly what's happening, but I I think this black guy who was working for the evil organization was like handing her drugs or something, or something. Well, it's like, because we didn't she know saw what any of them were doing. She saw him. Hug. No, that has nothing to do with it. Yeah, that was just a random that's, bit. That's when she turns around and that's when she betrays him. No, no, she was already betraying him. No, I think that's she the was bit already where she a betra- traitor. 
Oh, I don't know. I think that's when she betrays him. Yeah, but apparently she's a traitor. They 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 meet up at his house. She pulls a gun well, on him. Well, actually, first they go to bed. They have a bed scene. He's sleeping and he's thinking about it. Now that was earlier in the film. Was that's it? a th- that's a problem. Like a lot of things don't that flow. Nothing, nothing flows. I I have to wonder. He's sleeping in the bed with her. The covers are up. Do you reckon she's naked? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Because even though I know she didn't need to be naked for the scene, I reckon he made her be naked for the scene. I think that would have cost too much. Well, there's the weird, weird bit with the cam girl, yeah? The Wait, when was that? That's earlier in the film when uh, druggy, K, uh, druggy brother is still married. Right. Somebody in a leather jacket... This is why I was confused. You guys keep saying it was like Kate or Kale. It, I think was, it was. It was him. Was it? it yeah. It, but it switched to like first person view. Yeah, it was him. For a bit. Because it's that's uh, when you didn't know it was still him. He goes, mm, no, I think it was later in the film. No, uh, that's look, him. I, I don't know. That's don't him. Know. That's him. Uh, yeah, he, he goes and he meets his wife and she opens the door and she says, okay, come on in. She ducks behind and then oh it's obviously God. someone else walking around Again, in lingerie. It's, it's stock footage of some other chick in lingerie walking around. So he clearly... And you're just staring at her ass for a while. He must have tried to pay her to do it. And she's like, no, use stock footage. I'll stick my head out the door. Because but I'm not going to show my ass on screen. Because actress plays her later. Yeah, because she probably was like, stop trying to make me be naked. Stop trying to make me fucking do this. Mm. And that's why he uses stock footage instead. He's like, okay, I'll use stock footage, okay. Mm. Um, wow. Uh, anyway, Kale goes back to that place, and he just... Uh, he blows a lot of things how? up. Does Something it, it just happens. I don't up. know what actually happens to Kuz, but you just see his hand in the diamonds, and it's all bloody, and he's, like, knocking some of the diamonds over. Then, then we see the cats again, and one of them turns to stare at us. It does nothing. And then the muse woman turns into diamonds. And then we get the ending. And then both the brothers are like, I think they're sort of broken at this point. Uh, druggy one. Oh my God. The I'm police sorry. found where he was hiding hundreds of bodies of and, the evil executives. And Kale killed his wife. And Kale has had to kill his wife. We forgot about that scene. She shoots him, but I think he's invulnerable. So he's just like, whatever. Yeah, but he falls over still dramatically. Or is that just his heart? Is that his heart being shot from shooting her? I don't know. And then we get him monologuing again a bit more. Well, actually, no, sorry. We go to the Night Elf area, which is... The, is that real? Is that him in a dream? I thought that was the alien place because that's where the big alien head turns up again and starts talking to him. Well, it doesn't or help. Or he starts talking to it. You know what? It doesn't help that we're... Okay, so we're confused it, it if it's a dream sequence. It doesn't help none of it makes sense. Yeah, but it's confusing because is it a dream sequence? I don't think there are any dream sequences. Ah, there are. That's well, the is. confusing yeah. bit. That's what, what that? the, that's the confusing bit because this movie's already broken. Let's add in dream sequences plus alien sequences, so you don't even know when it's reality. Like that night elf sequence, I have no idea if that's a dream, another plane of existence. I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't know what the fuck it is. But that's where he sees his partner, and she's like, "Hey," and then she disappears. Oh, yeah, because she's going off to the afterlife or something. Right. And then we have a monologue about him saying, everyone has a right to be loved. Something yeah. else after that. Then it ends. So we don't and really know what happens. And then you get the happens. big Cade and Kale will return in the uh, next movie. True, but we don't... It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Well, what's crazy is we're watching the credits, and first of this all, is great. he credits all the people in stock footage. the stock footage. Because there's only about ten actors. Yeah. Like, 10 actors in his film. And then he... and again, we're using the word actors lightly. I think they were just, like, some friends he roped into it. Jared thinks they're actual, like, student actors. That was a real hobo. I don't think they were not good enough to be, like, even students. I I think they are. I think you underestimate someone. It's their midlife. They you mean decided... overestimate? Sorry, yeah. They, they, they've, they've hit their midlife and they've said, I'm going to go and be an actor like I've always wanted to yeah. be. And then they've gone to Nevada State College and then they see a big poster up in their local supermarket and it says, come be an actor, come to Casting Co. And they'll lunch cast you in a movie. Or something. Yeah, lunch is provided. Well, lunch is provided. They go there, it's just all hard-boiled eggs <laughs> and well, spam. As, as the credits go on, all these companies start popping up. It's like, oh, hair by BNN Haircuts. 
uh, food provided by this and that. There's all these different companies who do all the things. And then I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, these are really weird. Either these are like little local businesses that have like given him a small discount for like going there. Or I was like, oh, is he opened up like a bunch of like shell companies or something? Right. Like these are all just his things. I love the fact that we were saying it as it was happening because we were like, yeah. that's the stock footage actors. These aren't the actors. And then the, the companies were coming up and we were like, that's incredible. And then right he after got that, companies. there's just a message saying, all companies with B or N in their name, like no are B B actually, N or B N, whatever. no, just B or N or I think something. It was like double B and are actually like Neil Breen owned businesses, right? Or they're Neil Breen companies or whatever. So that's the way he, which is all he, of he them. tricks people. Yeah, he tricks people in because he won't actually come up saying it's a Neil Breen film. It's not a Neil Breen film. It's a like a casting by casting by local cast, talent producers yeah. LLC, which works for. Over the World LLC Productions, which is a Neil Breen owned company. Right. So he just tricks people into fucking going to these casting things. And then they don't know what they're getting into. They, because they probably don't know who, like, although like, I don't know. He is kind of these people reused in previous, from previous I films. I haven't seen them. I haven't I mean, seen he reused the Breen's. actors in the films. I haven't seen the other Neil okay. Breen films, but I, I just feel like he probably knows that he can't say Neil Breen films. Because people would look it up and they see Neil Breen, worst director of all, you know, and people wouldn't do it. So he that's why he's done that, maybe. I or, think people or do would still do it. Do you reckon that? I would do it maybe more. Maybe he doesn't want to get, do like, actual case. people who can act. Yeah, but or do you reckon that's just him being so up himself that, again, he needs to have the uh, illusion of having a place? I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever know. Yeah. It's too crazy. Even the, the, the movie is too crazy to comprehend. Yeah, it's... It's a mess. Okay. That's that's Twisted Pear, a Neil Breen film. The first one we've seen and probably not the last. Thanks for listening to The End of the Reel. If you know anyone else who is a fan of good, bad movies, share this podcast around to them. Sharing is the best way to help promote our podcast. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.